All right, this project is now complete. I've got it all wired. I've got a start stop switch over here. All done. Now I'll just go through a couple things. First of all, this motor, it's a marathon motor. Um, don't know the exact part number and all that. Doesn't really matter. I bought it on eBay. Chances of finding another one exactly like it are slim. But the thing about it is it's a inverter rated motor. So at 60 hertz it'll run 1725 RPM. But it's also rated at 120 hertz. Which means it'll run 3550 RPM at 120 hertz. That's twice what the frequency of your house or work is. So the other thing about it is there's no exposed cooling fan. It's large enough to where the case and everything can act as a heat sink to keep the motor cool. So it's completely sealed. Don't have to worry about dust getting in it, stuff like that. Now I just ran a piece of conduit over to this box. This is the original box that was on the saw when I purchased it. And when it was manufactured, the only thing I'm a little disappointed in, there was a sticker on here that sell, said uh, Delta Rockwell, I think. And that sticker had long since gone, so I couldn't save it. So inside this box, what I did is I put in this inverter. It's an Automation Direct GS1, like I said in the other video. Inverters are absolutely fantastic devices. This takes 120 volts and outputs three phase 230 volt. This motor is rated 230. That's programmable. Anywhere from 208 volts to 240 volts maybe. So I programmed it for 230 because that's the nameplate. It also has electronic over motor overload protection. So the motor is rated at one amp, and I installed, uh, programmed this for one amp. The motor originally that was on this machine said it was rated six amps. Now that's six amps at 120 volts. This is one amp at 233 phase. When you do all the math, this is still a little bit more efficient. I uh, I put a piece of DIN rail, um, if you need to know what DIN rail is, look it up, but it's, uh, it's a type of mounting hardware for uh, relays and stuff like that. It's a standard uh, mounting configuration, so this VFD snaps onto it. It'll also slide out here so that I can uh, program it. And then there's a, a little plastic clasp in the back I slide down and this will just completely pop off. The other thing I did was I programmed it so that the external on-off switch will run it, but the internal potentiometer will control the frequency. So if I need to change the speed that this is running, I can just open up the cover and manually turn this dial. Also, if I'm playing with this, let's say I turn it on, and now I'm going to make some kind of adjustment, I can also turn it off on the keypad. Another thing that I did that this drive will do is you can program how fast you want this motor to accelerate or decelerate to follow this five seconds. If you look at the other video on this, you can see it starting and stopping in five seconds. I changed it to three seconds. And then there's probably another 80 parameters that you could program, such as uh, torque curve, DC injection. Um, it'll communicate through Modbus, RS-45, um, probably TCPIP. It's got a... Uh, RJ45 jack on it that you can plug in your communication cable to. Just phenomenal the stuff that you can do. And like I said, I bought this used on eBay for uh, 
I think $75. New, they're probably about $150. I also left some holes in here. There's a hole in the bottom, and there's some holes in the back for the, uh, so this thing can circulate a little bit of air. Since it's loping along and not really doing a whole lot of work, I don't foresee it generating a ton of heat. So that, that is it. I'll um, flip it around so you can see the front here. So this is the original start-stop switch that came with the saw. And it's just a standard three-wire start-stop switch. And the GS1, as most VFDs, can take external start-stop commands. Uh, that's something you have to program in there, so I just programmed it for external start-stop. You can have external start-stop, forward-reverse, um, a whole bunch of other combinations like that. And then you can also have external potentiometer control the speed. So if you start it, you just hit the start button. Off we go. Stop it, just hit the stop button, and it stops. So that's the end of this project. Hope you enjoyed it. And on to the next one.